After circling the beach parking lot, you finally snag a spot. The kids sprint off, building sand castles for tiny crabs. You crack open a cold one and watch the seagulls fight over chips in the sky. Then, after the sun turns you into a Costco hot dog, it's time to hit the waters. So, you... Stick a sail on your belly and turn yourself into a human sailboat. And so do all the other dads that day. That's probably what the author of this patent envisioned when he wrote his contraption will fulfill the need for a recreational device readily adaptable for recreational activities on the water. And you may think that's crazy talk, but keep in mind, we already have human birds, the human bicycle, human tables and human gum machines. So let's check out if the human body sailboat would actually work, how fast you could skip over the water and what exciting additions version 2.0 features. Let's first talk design. The human body sail consists of three floating components. First there's the headrest. That includes a strap and a buckle to fasten around your forehead. It also has a hydrodynamic shape like a ship bow, so you can cruise full speed ahead. Then there's the footrest, which is also strapped to your feet, ensuring you're properly trapped when you're the most vulnerable. Lastly, there's the main body float, which extends from mid-waist to mid-chest and is designed to allow a portion of the body to be submerged. The final component is referred to as propulsion means, aka a tiny sail that looks like the flag that tells you you've reached the ninth hole. It has a vertical mass that fits into a socket and can be steered through proper manipulation of the arms. Also, each of the three float components has a socket, so you can sail the high seas in your own unique style. And now for the million dollar question. Would it work? And if yes, how fast can you go on it? And would it revolutionize marine travel as we know it? Before we crunch the numbers, let's take a look at what makes this a potential death trap. First, we have the sheer lack of stability. The body sail supposedly allows for a face-up, substantially horizontally oriented relation. But once you are in that position, let's hope for a snug fit because it would surely suck to lose your head and main float and drown with your feet up in the air. Then there's the lack of control. To quote the patent, Steering of the device occurs by proper manipulation of the arms of the user. Now this becomes especially fun when the sail is mounted next to your head and you're basically trying to steer with your armpits. And even if you manage that, it's all fun and games until the wind blows you out on the open ocean, in which case you hopefully brought this book. Sailboats also have keels to prevent sideways drifts. The human sailboat has a portion of the body that's submerged in the water. This prevents the sliding of the body laterally. In other words, your butt is hopefully large enough to avoid drifting sideways. Then there's also danger lurking from below, above and behind that are amplified when body sailing. Sharks might mistake you for a juicy seal, especially with that perky butt of yours. Meanwhile, above the surface, your tiny little flagpole might also attract lightning. And if you somehow dodge sharks and lightnings, this might be the last thing you'll see. But of course, I don't want to nitpick every minuscule design flaw. So let's assume we have optimal conditions. A moderate breeze, no waves, no sharks, lightnings or ships. How fast could you go? Now we need to address the elephant in the room. Our tiny flagpole. I know, I know, it's not about the size, it's about how you use it, but unfortunately we lack both. The most important metric for our speed is the sail area displacement ratio, which is fittingly abbreviated as SAD. To calculate our SAD, we need to plug in the area of our sail and the weight of our boat. I did the math, assuming our guy is 180 pounds and 5 foot 9, our flag area would be 1.16 square feet. Plugging this into our neat little formula, we get a SAD ratio of around 0.6. Now, for context, here's the SAD ratio of various vessels. Shocking, right? So it's a bit like comparing a Ferrari to a potato. A normal sailboat with a SAD ratio of 0.6 would look something like this. And worst of all, we didn't even yet account for the massive drag created by our butt and the not-so-hydrodynamic contraption. 
So considering all this, we would probably reach a speed of around 0.5 to 1 mile per hour. That's about 2 to 6 times slower than a decent swimmer, except we'd probably waste more energy than him trying to steer that damn sail. And even the continental drift might be some stiff competition. So you would be incredibly slow, face many dangers, and worst of all, it's just not a good look. Even for the 70s, and especially if the buckle jams due to saltwater corrosion, meaning you have to pick up your kids from school looking like this. So, it received an update. Richard, our inventor, likely might have realized himself, hmm, maybe turning humans into a three-piece furniture and throwing them in the ocean is suboptimal. So, less than five months after his application being approved, he applied for a second patent, the unitary body float. His new solution, glue all floats together. Besides that, your torso now straps under the boat, your head is slightly elevated so you can see where you're going, the sail is much bigger, and you have stabilizing wings. And funnily enough, Richard acknowledged the fragility of the first patent here. He wrote, Prior patents have lacked adequate anti-capsizing means. One of the more recent developments in body floats is disclosed in my patent number yada yada yada, where the user suitably moves his arms and hands to avoid capsizing. Now I have some of my own improvements for version 3.0, so perhaps we can go back to the drawing board. Let's see. We could make the bow shape more consistent, and we should probably protect our guy's butt from some sharks. But that means more material, which means more weight, which decreases our sad ratio, which means we need a bigger sail to compensate. This larger sail and the leg of butt means there will be more sideways drift, so we'll install a keel. Oh wait, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Anyways, back to Richard. Both of his patents were granted but expired in the early 90s. But what will never expire is the lesson learned. Dreams don't have to be practical, to be worth pursuing. Sometimes they just have to be weird enough that 50 years later, someone in a landlocked country, who only has a sailing license for dinghies, makes a YouTube video about them. There are likely many aspects I overlooked when judging the feasibility of Richard's inventions. I'm neither a seasoned sailor nor an engineer. To be frank, there's only one way to find out. So let me know if I should build one myself and give that thing the chance it deserves.